Welcome to season two of Under the Sisterhood. Over the 31 days of March, we are celebrating 31 Women's March of Voices during Women's History Month. We will have intimate conversations that will uncover each woman's superpower and find out how they use these superpowers to help other women. That's 31 days honoring 31 women and their superpowers. This is a podcast to celebrate women and all that they do in our world. I'm Elizabeth Alfenbein. Let's get under the hood. Today, we are celebrating Zuleha Keto, a daughter, sister, friend, ballerina at the National Theater Sarajevo, a contemporary dancer with Balkan Dance Project, a platform which unites dancers and choreographers from the Balkan region and former Yugoslavia. She's a dance teacher who is bringing contemporary dance to Bosnia and Herzegovina, where this dance form is still at the beginning of its development. She is passionate about dance and she's on a mission to popularize classical ballet and contemporary dance in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Through her education and collaboration with different choreographers and dancers from around the globe, she hopes to open the Sarajevo dance scene to the world. I am so thrilled to be celebrating Zuleha during Women's History Month. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It's an honor to be in your podcast and I'm really happy to can talk to you like really to share experiences with you mm. you know Zuleha it has been such an interesting experience um so far I've spoken with about 56 women from 28 different countries and it has been wow. so beautiful and while the first season was really about getting under the hood around being a woman the second season's been focused on celebration and all of what women are doing and sharing stories and superpowers. Um, so, but what's interesting is there's still this connection and it's been so beautiful. Um, the Each woman has wonderful stories to share and of course um, are doing extraordinary things. So why don't we get going? Okay, let's start. Okay, so so if you were um, you're speaking to the world, you're um, and we want you to share your story, Zuleja. So, yes, actually, I started dancing by accident. I went to the musical school to play piano and to learn how to play piano. And at the same time, there was an audition for classical ballet, and my mom was like, "Would you like to go?" And I was okay. Let's go. Let's try. So yes, I auditioned and I got accepted. And from the first ballet classes, that was when I really fell in love with dance. And it really got me through the whole, I'm oh, sorry, I have to just turn it up. Okay. And it's really how it developed me and, you know, turned my life upside down. So it's become part of me, a big amazing part of me and yes so I forgot about piano I, I finished piano school but ballet has been with me ever since so from that day through my whole life I have met, had the pleasure to collaborate and work with amazing dancers and teachers also a big part of my dance education was Genesis Sarajevo dance theater a uh, dance theater that was held by Amy Danielson, a dancer and teacher from the United States, which uh, would uh, join, uh, she would make these dance intensives at the beginning, and she would bring different dance teachers and dancers to Sarajevo to try to learn us different dance styles, so tap, hip hop, contemporary, jazz, everything. And when I was dancing for eight hours straight for two to three weeks, it was really when I figured out, okay, I can do this every day and I want to do this every day. So this was an amazing experience, which then lasted for many years. And I also had the opportunity to go to the United States twice and collaborate with different companies, different teachers and dancers and also this is a huge step a huge uh, thing for me to be able to work with so many different dancers and choreographers 
And since 2009, I was only 13 when I started dancing professionally in the National Theater in the Ballet Theater Company. So you you actually it's uh that's that's amazing by the way Thir at thirteen years old uh, to become a professional dancer, um you had started to suggest um and then there was a little beep and and I'm just highlighting that because I felt like something was going to come out. What was it about dancing? You started to imply that something it turned your life upside down. But what was it? What was going on in your life that dance just came in and it sort of took you? It allowed you to express yourself. Talk a little bit about that, because I think what you say, you were nine or 10 with the piano before you started taking uh, dance classes. Yes, I was nine years old and I, I was always hyperactive. I was always dancing at home, but I didn't really see that that dance could be something I would do professionally when I grow up. I didn't figure myself to be a dancer. when I, I wasn't this little girl that wanted to become a ballerina. No, I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. So when I started actually dancing and taking classes, which were really hard, yes, ballet is really hard. And we had also different types of, uh, different types of classes, not only ballet, but also historical dances. Uh, you know, so many classes at once because I was doing the music for piano, I was doing piano classes with all the theoretical theoretical classes, and I was doing ballet with all the theoretical classes as well. So I have been in the musical school for half a day, and for the other half a day, I would go to normal school. So I've been going actually to three schools at once, and this was actually the best experience of my life. That was when I fell in love with art, when I fell in love with art uh, as it's it as its form to you know to dance to play music to enjoy different productions different shows so that's really what opened up this moment of education was that changed everything for me you know if i hadn't gone to the musical school if i hadn't tried ballet then i wouldn't have been here yeah so that's what changed me what was um so that's interesting um um that opportunity gave you a whole new window and perspective in in terms of dance how did it make you feel as a young woman like did it because it gave you agency talk about how cuz dance is itself the ultimate self expression right so talk a little bit about that side because clearly um you you, you had mentioned that you always danced around the house how did that make you feel in relationship to you being a woman it, it's a great, I mean, it's a relationship with yourself. Whether you're a woman or a man, dance is the greatest relationship with yourself that you can have. And all the different emotions you can provide to yourself and to the public, to everyone, everyone who watches or the only four walls that are there in your house. So I find it kind of therapeutic how do you say that the uh, best therapeutic yes to you know go through the emotions but also to be able to uh, say things with your body not with words to tell a story with your body yeah so that's what I really love about Dance. I love, I, I actually love that is using your body to communicate that dance allows you to tell the story. That's beautiful. Um, so, so, you know, at 13, you became a professional um, dancer. Talk a little bit about the journey. What has it been like? Like, how did you begin? You, you went off to a new school. Like, what has it been like uh, tran um, sort of the transition between school and becoming a professional dancer? And what type of forms have you been doing? And, and and where have you been performing? Yeah, so I finished uh, the primary ballet school, but I was uh, actually finishing two years in one year. So I had one gap here. That's it when I started going to the National Ballet Studio at the National Theater Sarajevo. And after a month, 
uh, the director of the ballet company um, invited me to learn some parts for Cinderella. So Cinderella was the first ballet that I have been doing in this theater and I'm doing it since. Uh, it's been going on for several years now. I think 12. Are yeah, you the head, excuse me, are you the lead ballerina in that? Are you Cinderella? No, 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 I'm not the lead ballerina. I'm doing several dances. I have been doing several roles, but I'm not mm -hmm. Cinderella. Okay. Yes. I was so, just curious. Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. by the way. Those runs so, can last for so long. So that's terrific. Yes. Yes. So since then, I've been doing all, uh, sorry, with one show, then I've been doing all different shows, Tambelina, Giselle, and I got to do bigger and bigger parts. And after I finished this one year there, I went to the high school for music. I mean, for in the department for classical ballet, I finished the, I finished the high school. And then in 2015, I became a regular member because before you were 18, you cannot become a regular member at the National Theater. So since then, I've been dancing and going to work every day every day there so yes i'm doing what i love and i go to work and do what i love every day so that's really amazing yeah no i i i love i that's fantastic that's a wonderful thing uh, when you can do work when you can get paid because it's not really work when you do the things you're passionate about and love to do it, it brings out so many qualities in self so um so i'm just trying to put the put the timing together. So how long have you been within a member of the National Dance Theater? So I'm a member since 2015, so seven years now. Uh, for seven years now. There. So, mm -hmm. so, so um, as I was introducing you and talking about the fact that you do these collaborations and you look at both classical ballet and contemporary forms of dance, can you talk about like what your experience was with that and, and what got you into contemporary dance? What like, I mean, that's a, it's a very different to be able to do both and, and want to do both is really interesting. Yes. Uh, well, I didn't got to contemporary until like a third or fourth year in primary school where we would have different educations with different dancers who would come and do several classes for a year and that's it because we don't have contemporary as a regular class in Sarajevo we still don't have that as a regular class so I had this experiences with different teachers different dancers that would come then I started doing Genesis Sarajevo where I also had these different dance style forms and um I always had this love for contemporary dance. I always loved to watch contemporary dance shows and, you know, the free movement of the body. Also in the National Theater, we are opening up to contemporary. We started with some now classical ballets, awesome. then we have contemporary dances and contemporary productions as well with really amazing choreographers that would come. So, of course, we are more based on classical ballet but we're going with you know with the world we are going with what's happening around us and we are having contemporary shows as well so the really big thing for me was when I started uh, with Balkan Dance Project where I auditioned for them the Balkan Dance Project is a platform which brings dancers and choreographers from the Balkan region together Mm. And then we find ourselves in one place somewhere in the Balkans. And then we start doing a production, which then tours all around Balkans. So this is really a great opportunity for me. And that was a really great turning point for me to got, you know, to learn more about contemporary, to dance with dancers that only do contemporary, that are not classical ballet train that are really contemporary uh, trained that have been to going to schools just for contemporary so through them and through choreographers that I've been working with I got to you know dig deeper into contemporary and to know find myself somewhere 
more in the contemporary area than in the classical ballet because you know classical ballet is beautiful but it's really a totally different dance style than contemporary contemporary is really opened up really still moving still growing still happening so it's really amazing and i since i started with balkan dance i wanted to bring uh, contemporary dance more to Sarajevo and to Bosnia and Herzegovina because it's really closed up here. We don't have different companies. We don't have different dancers that do contemporary, only contemporary dance. So I really hope that the contemporary dance scene will evolve with time, that we will have an education for contemporary dance that we can provide contemporary dance knowledge to dancers here, not only classical ballet, even though classical ballet is also not so existent here as it is all over the world, but it's even though more happening than contemporary, but I'm kind of working on popular popularizing classical ballet and especially contemporary dance because many people don't know here what actually contemporary dance is. But through the years, it's become more of a boom. Contemporary dance has come to the dance studios. So this is also when I started to teach contemporary and classical ballet during my you know regular work days after I finish uh, work in the dance ensemble so yeah it's when yeah, I'm sorry go ahead I'm sorry I really fell, fell in love with dance well it's really interesting so I'm listening to you tell this story and I just love it but what comes to mind and this might sound a little well no I think it's kind of interesting is is like classical ballet is what you grew up with right and you started learning this contemporary and it's like interesting you know, because to your point, contemporary isn't really modernized in its in in your um in your region or your part of the world. There's great opportunity for you. But if you think about classical ballet being more structured, it's incredibly beautiful, but it's extremely controlled, right? All the moves, all the thing, you know, the way it's chore choreographed. I'm not suggesting that modern contemporary dance isn't choreographed. It's just there's more freedom in its choreography. Right. It's just like it, so it just seems and I think it's interesting because it coincides when you think about your age, your life, your timeline in life. You know, it makes sense that you would go from something that is more formal to something that becomes more and more. Um, I, I want to be careful to call it relaxed, but more independent, more free, more free moving. And I think that that it coincides interestingly to who where you are in your life as a woman. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, of course. I haven't thought about it like that. And so I'm happy, like thankful for you to open my mind to it because I haven't figured that quite out because, you know, that is always some quiet timeline where everything happens at once at the same time. So I'm doing classical ballets in the mornings. Then I have, when I had Balkan dance, I would go in the evenings and do contemporary dance shows. So yes, it's, you know, when your life is so full of experiences and full of things that you don't have the time to really kind of structureize it. So yeah, I feel like, yes, classical ballet is a big, big thing and a big part of my life. But going forward, I really want to commit to contemporary dance more. Of course, because with classical ballet, you are really uh, maximalized in terms that with age, you know, it's harder to have the same uh, dance capabilities that you have. And you with 45 years, you are no longer in the maximum capacity to dance classical ballets but of course you for contemporary dance you still have some years you know to commit to different shows different productions so yeah nobody knows what the future brings of course but I mm. hope that I've been able to dance for quite some time and I really want to open up to contemporary more and to give myself more to contemporary well, I think I think that's a really wonderful um I think that's a wonderful 
um, strategy in terms of your future, as long as you love it. I think the other thing is, is maybe as you're, as you're thinking about bringing contemporary dance as an art form to um, Sarajevo more um, and, and popularizing it, um, that would put you in a position to really be the leader in that and how you decide to do it. And maybe, you know, maybe you could be that person who, that woman who sets um, a whole new bar that says, you know, we're going to do this. And maybe you put together an older, once you get past 45, and maybe you, you're in a professional dance, um, contemporary dance group, um, um, prof you know, professional till you're, say, 50. But maybe you decide, you know what, I'm going to create a professional you know, middle-aged group who can go out there and go on tour and stuff because just because you get to this point doesn't mean you stop loving the the art of dancing. And so I think that you have, it's like, it's so promising. It's so wonderful to hear um, just sort of the way you came about it and um, and where you are today. And of course, you're still so young. So that, that's a really amazing, amazing uh, solution. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, it happened actually all naturally so from that point on when I started doing Balkan dances when people came to me and wanted to take classes wanted them to you know start doing a different ballet studios different dance studios so that is when I fell into teaching and it's been going on for a while now yes since 2017 so also a big thing, a big love of mine is a youth center here mm. in Sarajevo, uh, where I've been having uh, dance classes. So yeah, that's a big love of mine. It's, it's always wonderful to give back that way, to take your gift and being, be able to foster the next generation. That's really, really um, something and really beautiful. Um, before we go on to the next uh, the next question, I do want to say that I think it's going to be really interesting to watch what your future holds because you are at a point. You know, one thing you almost have to be grateful for is the limitations within your country because that affords so much opportunity for you to go lead the next generation or even the next stage of what dance looks like in Sarajevo. So I, I think we're going to be looking and watching for you um, and see what you do with that. Um, so, so what would you say with the next question? And I love this question. Um, what would you say your superpowers are, Zuleha? My superpowers. Well, I will find my superpowers that I love to give knowledge, and I love to share everything I have learned with different dancers, children, and I really love working with children. My superpower was also that I have a lot of energy, which I can give to doing my job, you know, even though I'm always doing 100 things at once, I have sometimes to, to find out and, you know, to, uh, to have place to do everything I want to do in days. So I'm really happy that I, you know, have this energy and that I, can bring this energy to other people and that I can open up and teach other other um, other people about dance and of how dance is happening here and how we have amazing dancers, amazing talents and how it can grow and become so much bigger than it actually is. So it's really great when we have also these productions that are really popular that people around Sarajevo know and want to see and also from different cities because of course we have uh, people coming to Sarajevo also from different cities so it's really great when you're part of something that's bigger than you and mm -hmm. I love being part of this yeah that's that's a wonderful superpower to be able to 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 be able to teach and almost I think it's like uh shedding light if you will on whatever it is you know, we didn't really spend that much time on your teaching side. You know, I know that we we talked about that, that you, that you also teach. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> this just came to mind. Is do you prefer dancing and being part of the production or do you enjoy teaching more? Like, what are you like right now at this phase? And how, how old are you, Zuleha? 
I'm 25. Okay. So I still I still prefer to be on stage and to dance more than I prefer to teach, but I really love to teach. So going through getting older, for sure, I will be more open to the teaching side than to the dancing side. Of course, I now balance where this my stage stage side, my dancing side is now more valid than the teaching side. So whenever I have time, I have some classes, I do the classes. So yeah, it's, it's been kind of a challenge to go with both sides, but I find the time. Yeah, you have to be careful. You have to make sure you take care of yourself because your performance until your time comes when you have to go full time to teaching, you really want to honor that and respect your body and stuff because that's a lot, but but it's wonderful to give back. And I want to go back to your earlier comment, which is around one of your superpowers is your amazing energy. Um, yeah, energy is a wonderful thing to go out there. And when you combine your energy with passion and movement, only magical things can happen. So that's a great superpower to be high energy. Um, as long as you're as long as you're always taking care of that energy, because that energy is really special. It needs to be refueled and stuff. Yes. Yes, you, know. you have to take take time off, and you have to really take care of your body. And you know, there's been times when I have been working all, all the time, and of course, your body shuts down, you get sick. So that's when you have to really to take back and take a step back, and really, you know, make time for everything. Of course, as I'm growing older, I'm also being more aware of how I manage my time and how I you know have always at the end of the day some time for me because it's really important to take care of you so that you can take care of your art of your body and of the people you are surrounded by and the people you are an example to when you're a teacher of course you're an example to the children to the teenagers I'm working with so yeah, it's really important to take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. Yeah, I, I, I'm really happy that you spent a little time on that because particularly, I mean, I think you have to, women, we have, we're so busy taking care of everybody else. So it's interesting, you, you take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. But the truth is you need to take care of yourself because you need to take care of yourself. It just begins there. And I'm really happy you brought that up yes. because I think often we, we don't even acknowledge that, you know, that, that if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't really show up for anybody else. But more importantly, we can't even show up for ourselves. And particularly when you're performing and you have an audience, to, you have to show up as your best self for the performance. So it's really critical. And then, of course, you're a role model. So when you take care of yourself, the next generation of young women or young men that you're teaching dance to are going to feel that and understand and own that it starts with honoring your bodies, your temple, you know, and so, um, so that's yeah. wonderful. So, so Zuleha, what would you say, um, how do you use these superpowers to help other women? And I know that you work with men as well, but today we're going to focus on the women. How would you say you use them? Hmm, how I use them? Well, I use them, you know, to provide everything I know to them. So that's a great thing for me. And that's, I think, the best thing I can give to other women. Also to encourage them to take a step forward, not to be shy, to take every opportunity, every class, every possible dance thing that is happening. So not only to think about Sarajevo or other cities that I'm teaching in, but to think about the global picture, to think about, okay, you're now in Sarajevo, but you don't have to be in Sarajevo. You can go to Paris and take a, a dance class there, or, you know, you don't have to be limited by where you live. Of course, we're limited in certain ways, but, you know, to think about the globe, the global picture you know to open up for opportunities that are around you and to go globally in that term yeah to think about that you don't have to be here you can go and dance somewhere else and that's great because we have really great dancers and 
we really have to push them a little bit to go into the world. So it's really interesting. You know, what just came to mind as you were saying that is like, you're right. For you to give that gift to say, look beyond Sarajevo, look out into the world and look at all the opportunities is just wonderful. Because at the end of the day, dance is a universal language, right? So you can go anywhere and the opportunities are, you know, could be greater in different places and the experience, it's all about the experiences, right? Yes, of course, like in, in our dance theater, I mean, you know, National Theater, Italian dance ensemble and the ballet ensemble we have many dancers from all over we have from Mexico from Serbia from Croatia that are surrounded but also from Romania Italy so from all over the place from Russia also so it's an universal universal language and when you especially in classical ballet the terms are always the same Everyone knows the terminology, so you can go and dance wherever you like. So it's really great and amazing to be able to, you know, work with different people, even though they don't speak your language, you can communicate through your movements, through the body, you know, through, through movement and through dance. So yes, it's really great when you work with someone and you don't speak the same language, but you understand each other. So, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Hey, just a question, because I know that, you know, in introducing you, were you, where were you, where were you born and, and what, like what cities, so you were born, um, were you born in, in Bosnia? Like, yes, I was born in Sarajevo oh, so, okay. after the war in 97. So the reason why I'm asking that is, did have you like what cities have you found yourself performing in? Oh wow, I have to think about that. So yes, I have been performing all around Bosnia. Uh, we have this tour where we go all around. Uh, I've been performing in Serbia. I've been performing in Slovenia, in Croatia. Not to, to tell all the different cities because there were several. But uh, in Montenegro, I have been performing in uh, Paris. I have been performing in New York when we were doing with the collaboration with Carolyn Dorfman Dance. So yeah, it's quite a thing when you think, I haven't really thought about where I have been performing because you know it's just like you go and perform, but then I think about it, I have been through the whole Balkan region in several cities and yes it's been amazing i was just gonna say that is amazing and just to bring your perspective growing up and in sarajevo and your the forms that you've learned and being able to share the universal language of movement and dance and not necessarily you know more traditional language is just such a beautiful thing so we're coming to an end of course i want to get more into details about the dance this is very exciting for me um, but, you know, here you have a platform um, to, to, to leave a message for women around the world. Um, you're a professional dancer. Um, you do beautiful things. You teach it. You perform. What, though, do you want to say to women around the world beyond that? I want to say that no matter where you live or where you grow up or what are you doing at the moment, uh, just be open-minded and open yourself up to everything that's been going around you and you are not limited by anything I mean I'm saying that in terms of me I've been living in a small country in a small city and I don't feel limited in any way and that's a great thing you know to be open up and to collaborate work to meet new people to do different things to do different uh, different different types of work you know I'm saying I'm now a dancer I'm now a teacher but maybe in 10 years from now I want to do something completely different and that is a great thing just as long as you do something with passion that you do something that you love I think that you will find your way in the world and that you will find your voice and that you will find yourself and what you want to become and what you want to do with your life so Yes, I just want to 
tell women all over the world just to open up to the world and to do whatever they want. I love that. I love that. My heart is just that I feel the expansiveness in that when you're and I think that when you open your mind and your attitude to things, magical things can happen in so many different capacities. And, you know, I think you made a nice comment there, which is, you know, 10 years from now, you might want to do something different, but do it with passion, do it with conviction. And of course, with confidence um, and things will happen from there. So um, this has been um, such a wonderful conversation. I just have to say, I'm so thrilled and honored to be celebrating you during Women's History Month. Uh, Zuleha Keto um, from from um, Sarajevo, um, a professional dancer. Thank you so, so much. And I will leave in the show notes, everybody, if you want to follow and learn more about uh, Zuleha, um, it will be, her information will be in the show notes. So if you can do that, check it out and check her out. It will be great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak with you and to be part of this podcast and to, you know, have a platform for women all over, over the world. So it's been great meeting you and talking to you. And I hope we keep in touch and I hope that you know, some, someone finds this inspiring and, you know, takes a step forward and makes something for mm -hmm. themselves. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. And of course, we'll keep in touch. That's been one of the wonderful things is making these amazing connections. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Under the Sisterhood. If you haven't already, please give us a quick rating and review on Apple or Spotify. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn so you can hear from more amazing women. This podcast is created and hosted by Under the Sisterhood LLC and Elizabeth Alfenbein. Produced by Elizabeth Alfenbein and Zach Slaff and edited by Zach Slaff. The music is by Ayla Schaefer, her song, Rose.